This is who we're looking for. His name is Donald Godshaw. You up to this? Why wouldn't I be? Still have problems with your back. You take medication for it? Only what the doctor prescribes. Oh, Werner Herzog is a genius. Werner Herzog. Masterpiece he has made. I'm full of fuck this, off. This is know? his hey, remake man. of Fitz Carraldo with Nicolas Cage. This guy made Grizzly Man. Come on. You, you got to give it up no, to him. Uh, the made bear it. made Grizzly Man. He came in and just took the footage. <laughs> he made a gear of the wrath of God. How about a gear of wrath of God? Uh, know, okay, right? let's. If we're going to talk Werner Herzog I mean, here. We're, if you're talking like we were, we're uh, talking my, What is it? My, fa- my favorite fiend? We were my reviewing, best fiend? We were reviewing uh, the Orson Welles movie in Six saying he's one of the great auteurs. Well, I hate to break it to you. So is Werner Herzog. He's one of the guys that if you take a history of film class, you will discuss his okay, movies. And, and this is one of those cases where I think he probably has such a great body of work. Now, I've never seen any of his other movies and he did have a movie about Klaus Kinski right that was called uh, uh, My the, Favorite Fiend well, yeah, that was the documentary about the document- his long history of working yeah. with him I love Grizzly Man My Best Fiend My <laughs> Best Fiend yeah I, but I haven't seen any of his other movies oh, and well so, you're missing out he's well, earlier work and especially. maybe that's why I'm coming into this with a fresh mind because I think uh, Werner, Werner, have you want to say his name? Werner, Werner. Yeah, it's pronounced know, Fred he's in America Werner yeah. Herzog <laughs> his mom named him Werner yeah. I'm gonna call him Werner <laughs> yeah here uh, I, I'm watching this with with nothing clouding my thought here, and I come into it cold, and I see a movie. We're, we're talking about Bad Lieutenant. What's it called? Port of Call. Bad New Bad Lieutenant. Port of Call. New Orleans. New Orleans. Uh, I never saw the original Bad Lieutenant. Now you were just telling me a little while ago that this there was there was some debates going on. Cyrus was saying that. Uh, Werner Herzog was saying that this is a well, this is a, a sequel to here's, the original. Here's the base history of this film. Uh, Abel Ferreira, 1992, made a film called Bad Lieutenant, starring Harvey Keitel. Yeah, really good classic fucked up movie. Yeah, uh, they bought the rights to remake Bad Lieutenant and hired a guy to write a script for Bad Lieutenant. But Werner Herzog never has seen Bad Lieutenant and refused to call this a remake. Because he's not remaking a film because you can't remake a film you haven't seen, even if the work was inspired. But the the film, the theme of what Herzog does here deviates so much and the script is so radically different and the changes they've made depart so much that it is neither truly a remake nor a sequel. It is theoretically a remake, but it is so far off base that it just shares the name. Which, yeah. you know, seems like a weird decision to, to get a guy to do it who's never even seen the original, could care less and wants to do his own thing, except, except it's, it's Werner Herzog, Herzog and you're like, who's fucking do whatever crazy. you want. The guy <laughs> is fucking fucking batshit insane and this movie is batshit insane in fact i cannot fault you for hating this movie i cannot because it is i won't even say hate i just think it's a really bad film it People is give it a pass it no 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 nobody's giving it a pass in fact the, the reviews i read aren't giving it a pass some people are having a hard time describing what they're seeing but the thing about this movie is it is a terrible film that is intentionally terrible and is meant to be bad for the sake of humor it is a comedy told through the filmmaking of really terrible filmmaking all right, that that sounds awful to me. That, that, that sounds like an excuse. That sounds like somebody who released the movie, and then when everybody said, "You know what? This guy is a genius. He cannot make a bad film. He meant for it to be that way." And Dude, I'm looking at that. I'm like, "No, no, no, no nah, nobody, King, nobody King has no clothes here. No, no, no. See, that's that's bullshit. That's reading. No, no, look, I'm talking you. You're talking about stuff you've read. I'm talking no. about the people that I've walked out of the movie with. I'm watching this, and people have walked out of the. Now we weren't the same screening. We, I think we had a different screening. I walked out of the movie, and there were a lot of people. Who, who you even saying like you know I don't I really don't know what to say about that movie one person was, was there like I'm here twice because I really don't want to say anything about it bad just yet and some people are like oh this is really good I'm just like Come on, people. It's fucked up. It's, it's bad. All it right? is fucked up, but he was trying to make a fucked up film. And he was trying it. to be right. funny. Since it's, it's not <clears throat> a sequel or a remake, what's it about? It's very simple what it is. I mean, because once you mention the premise, from that point on, it really doesn't make any sense. Nicolas Cage, it, sort of like Harvey Keitel in the original movie, yeah. he's a guy that's investigating the murders of like five Sangalese people. And but we discover that he's sort of corrupt in his own way. How's he going to solve this crime if he's addicted to gambling and worse drugs? Uh, sometimes the, the their prescription dl- drugs, sometimes they're illegal drugs like cocaine. Yeah. Uh, he hurt his back, so he's already becoming addicted to painkillers. Now from that point on, it's all about just following this guy around and him just seeing life in this drug-addled, fucked-up way. And not only are we seeing it in his way, but we start to see it in Werner Herzog's way, or Werner Herzog's way, whatever the fuck. He, 
Werner Herzog takes time to just focus on lizards. And I always thought that there was really, I mean, there's a point we, where we, we switch perspective. You'll yeah. be in the middle of a scene and all of a sudden the camera will be from the lizards point of fucking view. And you're looking up at, at these people as this lizards like freaking out at the camera and biting the camera. It's fucking hilarious. Yeah, yeah, there's a scene. I really, I came out and asked people, I said, okay, is there some symbolism that I missed here with lizards? And people are like, no, he just like lizards. And I'm just like, oh, man, you got to be fucking kidding me. I mean, you know, you try to say, like, Nicolas Cage is drug addled in this movie. No, Werner Herzog is the one that was doing coke and, and painkillers before he got behind the camera. I, I like turtles. Well, then you, <laughs> well, you movie, do, but that's a completely different situation altogether. Yeah, you don't have a camera when you're, like, fucking with turtles. You know, that's a whole di- different thing. But no, this, I mean, there's certain things that just seems like, it's like I'm watching his obsessions, and I'm supposed to accept it because, oh, he has a great body of work. He can do no wrong here. I'm, that's I'm not, not, that's a, not true. Well, in not, fact, you're uh, you're talking to somebody who is not a huge fan well, of all his work. Though. I mean, that's a different perception. I mean, he you, you inten- bought it. I didn't. Well, he intentionally made a bad movie. Uh, Nicolas Cage is so overacting in this thing. Nicolas Cage is actually doing a parody of Nicolas Cage. He's like, doing everything we've made fun of to a, a whole new level. Let me show you this place. I spent a lot of time here. When I was a boy, that doesn't work anymore. I was here alone a lot. This was my special place as a child. My my castle. And I would imagine things here. Pirates, buried treasure. And my dad didn't like that so much. But my mom, she she got it. And uh and before she died, she bought me a metal detector. Come up here, I'm going to show you something. And then, look at that. Right out there, I thought that pirates came up the Mississippi and that they buried treasure right there by that tree next to the house. So I, I, I took the metal detector that my mom gave me and I went out there with it and it started beeping. It was like, beep, 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 beep. And I started digging, and I, I, I dug, and I dug, and I dug, and I found a, a sterling silver spoon, and I was so happy. I started screaming and jumping and laughing, and I went, hey, man, this is treasure. This is pirate treasure, and I came back in here with it, and I hid it somewhere, this sterling silver spoon. I still can't find it. It could be anywhere. I, I, I know it's here. It's unbelievable how much fun he's making of himself in this movie by parodying what he's been doing in the last 10 see, years. It's, it's, when you say they made a bad movie on purpose, to me, that's a parody. I mean, we've seen movies where they've made like glitches on the film. They made acting bad that we can recognize. This, I mean, look, if you've made a bad movie and you made everything note for note bad, it is not a parody anymore. It is just a bad film. Maybe you are defining bad in different ways. No, well, no, he, no, 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 no. We're defining it, it the same way. Like, I fully understand why Corey dislikes this film because this film, it you cannot accept it on its merits because it's straight up merits looking at it on the surface without trying to figure out what they're doing. It's like God awful, except you're giggling at it. But then you find yourself really laughing laughing at just how fucked up some of this shit is now, that's would, happening. I would give you this. It becomes obvious that Werner Herzog is not taking this serious after a certain point. Right. I mean, the, the, when I was looking at it, I was like, okay, he really is treating this as somewhat of a comedy. Yes. But it's still not a good comedy. All these people saying they sat there and they laughed and they giggled and they and they thought they saw the comedy in it. I I, I recognize that he's delved into th- this comedic zone, but I still was bored. I, I did saw, not laugh. I saw it in an audience that was cracking up. I was rolling on the floor. I was so fucking... This thing was fucking funny. It was so goddamn awful. And it's intentionally awful. And just some of the things... There's moments where, just for no reason whatsoever, Nick, no reason whatsoever, Nicholas Cage starts yelling, Till the break of dawn! <laughs> Till the break of dawn! So is this like, and, like vampires kiss Nicholas Cage? Except taken to a whole new level. I mean, it's literally him. It, imagine the SNL skits that you've seen sure. of Nicolas Cage 
And imagine Nicolas Cage making fun of those the guy in those skits. But you know what? We've seen this movie with Nicolas Cage being as bad in other movies that weren't made by directors. Not have this, this bad. And we're like, not and this we, bad. And we let that pass. I, no, we've seen we've seen him in bad movies where he he was this bad. No, I, never, never. You know, shoot him again. His soul still dancing. Well, that's because he's giving crazy lines to say. That's not exactly Nicolas Cage overplaying it. Now you're also coming from the aspect that you you aren't really immersed in Herzog's work and you don't realize that Herzog really is a magnificent filmmaker and if he intended to make a bad movie and he made a bad movie then you accept that he was trying to make a bad movie unless I mean, he fucked up because Hertz well Herzog's admitted when he's fucked up in the past that's true that's the thing is Herzog when he makes a bad movie he steps back and goes no I'm sorry I, I made a terrible movie it's shit I hate it I'm gonna move on and make another movie and this just came out there's still time to say that <laughs> I, no this <laughs> Film, this film has been playing for, for months now on the circuit, and people who are digging it really dig it. Like I said, I saw it in an audience that really grokked it. They really Maybe found this it is funny. Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. I know? mean, no, well, again, that's a movie that, you know what? that has become like this classic film, but back then, you know, it was a piece of shit. That's a, that's a great comparison. The one that it actually reminded me of and, and perfectly divides us here is uh, I Know Who Killed Me. Where, Damn. Where, no, where Chris Sievertson was trying, he was, he was making an indie comedy on a studio budget and found this wacky shit funny and was trying to make a silly film under the nose of studios. This is Herzog doing the same thing, except that he's Herzog, not Chris Sievertson. And, and as a result, he also wasn't working under the studio, so he could do whatever the fuck he wanted and really got some truly off-the-wall crazy fucking See, shit just, in this, this movie. Is, this movie is just pointless to me. It's like, why try to make a bad film to show how people how to show people oh this is how clever I am you still made a bad film I uh, don't you know. disagree with you either no, I, I just I, watching it I was amused by and, it. I don't know if I'll ever watch it again but man I enjoyed the experience of watching it and walking out into the the uh, walking out into the lobby and talking to people about it and I've got buddies who are still quoting the film to me a week later yeah and I'm not trying to dis- look I'm not trying to like sway you change your mind I'm just saying for me I really do think and and I'm sticking strong to this that. Because I haven't seen as many of these guys, uh, this guy's movies. Because I look, I, like I said, I, the couple of movies that I've seen, I think they're great. But looking at this, I never went in with the whole thought of, oh, this guy, you know, he he is so clever and such a genius that this movie had to be bad for a reason. To me, it's just a misstep. Of well, you oh, did, you, you did, you did walk in cold, whereas I walked in knowing that it was going to be a bad movie. But see, first impressions say everything. Yeah, yeah it's true. But this is the, okay. This is the year that a movie called The Room came out, and people were so prepared to go in knowing it was going to be awful, and they walked out going, "I don't think it's awful at all. I think it's hysterical and awesome." They know it's awful, but it has some. Thing, that je ne sais quoi that if you know you go into it prepared to look at it in that way you can enjoy but you know what the difference it. and maybe is? that's what's happening it's just what he said uh you got one guy who's made a series of great films and yeah. then came in and made this bad one and is trying to push it off as like oh, i'm such a genius i can get by on it just being bad and say it's a comedy you have another guy the guy that uh what's his name tommy wazoo yeah. wazoo the one that made the room the yeah. guy just didn't know what the fuck he was no doing. no no that's true <laughs> and, yeah but, he really thought he made a good movie but either yeah. way like we're we're uh choosing to read intentions onto herzog that we don't really know what they are i'm not reading intentions point. on his part i'm saying that's what i'm talking that's what i'm telling you i didn't go in with it like oh he intended for, for it to be this or he wanted to be that i went in thinking like okay i'm going to see a movie and walking in cold i'm walking out of it saying it is a bad movie i don't find it funny i find it boring and i and really i think that people who love this director are the ones who are bringing in this whole thing of saying like okay this guy is a genius and can do no wrong the, who else the, is in this that's recognizable exhibit uh what's val kilmer val shows val up for val a few val minutes val, oh, yeah, exhibit. Val, val <laughs> kilmer, yeah and it's like and exhibit is one of the better performances for, in the movie for yeah. a bulk shows up yeah um well, uh, um, Eva uh, Mendez. Eva Mendez yeah. is in it. Uh, and, and, who's that? Who's the woman? Who's the older woman who usually is in Christopher Guest movies? The one that looks like a melted Barbie doll. Jane Lynch. Yes. Is she in this? Yeah, she plays the 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 drunk uh, stepmother. Oh no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that's oh. Jennifer Coolidge. Wait, no, no, no. You yeah, think yeah, that's her name? Yeah, Jennifer, yeah, Jennifer Coolidge. Coolidge. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, it's, uh, I mean, there's so many bad performances in this movie. You start to distinguish that. Okay, maybe that was meant to be bad, but. This here is just plain bad. Man, so. Feruza Bonk, she was detailing my car last week. <laughs> <laughs> Did she do a good job? I need somebody to wash eh. my Okay. I wouldn't recommend it. She used the face uh, to dry hey, it off. Hey, let me, 
<laughs> let, let, let me change your mind a little bit here. She shows up in a bra and panties, and she's still got it. Oh, and she her body wise, she does. It's one of those things. Well, sure her face be, was never. She was always a no. butter face. I thought for sure she, she was always be dating at, Marilyn Manson by now. Oh no, yeah, no, <laughs> that time has passed. He's too old for. But no, she she is one of those sexy, ugly girls. You know the kind. A of butter face. Yeah, everything well, no, is great I'm, about well, her. Butter like, face. She's, like a, she's what, like a chick who's like who, she looks like she was hot at one time, and somebody gave her some gave her some jawbreakers, and she didn't know, and they just broke all her teeth. Damn. No, she's the girl that you see in the bar. You're like, you know what? Normally, I wouldn't go for that, but you got it's it's one fifty nine, and, and you got a nice body. And the thing is, you look crazy. Do I have time for three more shots? <laughs> yeah. So she's perfect for this film. You know, I, I bet one of hers. We, we, fucking her. We say that, but I guarantee, you, if she came to one of our spill parties, Corey, Corey would. I'm have telling you, I would. I'm not saying I would. I'll be the guy with the first one to say, "Y'all, good night." Look, you we would get a, you That's because to. we wouldn't have a chance. You'd push us out of the way. <laughs> I'm the one swoop there. in there. Nail that shit and joke about it the next morning. You'd, you'd be like, here, put this mask on. Yeah. No. You give me too much credit, my friend. No. Yeah, yeah. He, she, he don't need no mask. It's no, called a fuck, light switch. Uh, fuck a mask. Beauty, beauty is but a light switch away. Yeah, exactly. I'd I'll be the one looking at you. Why are you just having to detail your car? So what do you, you guys, can do so much more with this. What do you guys no, give this? No, I'm look, curious. it's... Because y'all got me like, all right, this is the type of film that I'm hearing both of y'all. And it one of those films, I know how I am. I could very well go into this and think it's like the funniest thing I've really seen do, all year. Yeah. Or I might hate it just as much as you I do. can tell you I read from the way you're talking because you're defending the director before you've even seen the movie. You like him. So you're saying you think I'm highly of him. <laughs> you, yes. I yes, I am. Yes, Cyrus, you love him so much. You want to marry him? Sure. Full price yeah. for you, you dumbass. I love bitch. It's like, oh, why, why am I being judged? <laughs> why don't you just you suck his dick? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I honestly think that you are one of those people. Look, tell, you can say I'm talking shit about You're pretentious you, pretentious motherfucker. I know you. Yeah, Screw you guys. I'm going home. <laughs> I think you will like the movie. I do. Me, I, I got to go by first impressions. I walked out of there saying that was some bullshit. I so Matt May, right? Uh, <laughs> man, after everybody gave movie Matt May before, I was still well, what would I think of it? I really do, man. I no, fuck that. I'm gonna tell you what. You're gonna be like me. You're gonna. I wish you would see, so you can come back and tell me. Yeah, I know what the fuck they were talking about. So, so, so you saying it's a white thing, yeah. aren't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. You, and Leon, you know how white people love this shit. Yes, you know, I do. Yeah. <laughs> you know Y'all's always hanging around the haunted house too long. <laughs> You know, always all, that, us, all that old art shit. You know, always letting us have wait, sex you, with for, you forgot to mention that Eva Mendez is lying around half naked doing coke the whole time. And even that could not do it for me. Especially when I, I got training day at home, I can see a fully naked. I don't know that might do it for Leon. Though. Yeah, that could. That, that, that could be the Again, thing that tips it over. You have training day at home where she's butt naked. You, okay. Yeah, you, you got you a ain't point got there. Here, but now, look, God bless those that like the movie. I know I might get criticized for it, but to me, it's some bullshit. I see through that shit. But really? apparently I won't. But <laughs> I'm gonna go see that and hate that motherfucker now. You just no. watch. <laughs> now I've the thing. Put on these glasses. <laughs> here's the really important thing. I give this a, a positive rental. This is something that you should rent. You should check out. If the idea, if you enjoy watching bad movies, if you like Werner Herzog, if you want to see Werner Herzog make a deliberately bad movie and use that medium as a comedy, it's definitely worth checking out. But I cannot stress enough that you have to know what you're getting into because otherwise, if you walk into this thinking that it's a good movie, you are going to have your mind just melt right there because it's not a good movie. It, so in other words, you have to talk yourself into saying it's no, a no, good no, movie. no, 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 no. You have to ex. You all you have to do is accept, I know they're trying to make a bad movie, not what the fuck were they thinking. It's because that's that whole thing. You get that moment of sitting there watching it going, what the fuck? Would, how could anyone leave that the camera running with Nicolas Cage going off like that? But when you know that was their intent... It's a lot easier to swallow. Man, I love all the qualifiers you put on what you have to do to like this movie. You you have to survive a series of traps, each one more deadly than the next. And this if you get through the end of the maze, you will like this movie. But this is this is exactly the type of uh, it is a very inaccessible film. It is it is a thing that I in fact I put this in, in a written review and I got reamed for it, but it's true. It's very much a hidden review and I got reamed for it, but it's true. It's very much a hipster movie. Oh. It is it is very much 
watch a film. Does that not say it all? <laughs> it is, th- thank you, Corey. Fuck thank you, Corey. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> and, and that's why I think Cyrus will love it. <laughs> fuck you, Carlisle. <laughs> it's, I mean, in fact, in my review, I called it the, I said, you know, this, this is the cinematic version of drinking PBR at a good bar or growing an ironic mustache. <laughs> this is that film that you have to totally, you have to really be into getting the kitsch of it to understand why it's entertaining. But it is not a good film, but it accomplishes what it sets out to do. And I think that if you can, if you, you think you can enjoy what, what it does, it's a very cool, very different fucked up Okay, film. first off, Damn. PBR is a good beer. <laughs> Second, what's wrong with my mustache? <laughs> um, it's not on your face. <laughs> well, I did the best I could. <laughs> To the break of dawn, baby. <laughs> you know the people are friendly there.